Hello everyone. In this video, we will see a real world use case of subflows. This was a question asked on ServiceNow community and I thought of making a video on this as well because it will be beneficial for everyone to know that this is a use case which is most commonly used and then we can create a subflow for it and reuse it again and again. And I hope this will be very, very useful to the ServiceNow community and I will upload the code on ServiceNow share as well. My name is Hardit Singh and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. This is the use case. As a developer, I want to create a subflow for approval so that it is reusable by other developers as well. So basically, I will be creating a reusable subflow which can be used by some other teams developers and if you are promoting citizen developers, they can actually come here and use this subflow for their flows and it's helpful for everyone. So the logic would be there would be a main flow of your catalog item. We are considering uh, that this flow will be built for catalog item and then you will be calling your approval subflow by sending some inputs in that and your subflow will return whether the request was approved or not. So now to build that we will create a subflow then a flow and then we will test it. Let's quickly jump to service now. I'm in service now and I will go to my flow designer and I will create a new subflow and I will maybe name it as approval subflow. You can go ahead and give the description and annotation for this. For example, if I give the annotation as this subflow can be used for getting approvals from the appro approvers. I will go ahead and submit this subflow and I will create two inputs for this. The first would be the requested item. I will create that RITM request input and I will make it as type of reference and it would be referring to REQ underscore item. So this is the requested item table which we will be referring to. So you would have to send a requested item record as an input here. And then for more flexibility, we will accept another input, which would be the approval group. So it will make your subflow more flexible that users can set their rhythms or the requested items and the approver groups as well. So it will be very, very flexible and reusable for them. So I will just go ahead and add that second variable here and I will name it as approval group and I will give it again as a reference field to obviously the user group table. So sys user underscore group table and I will make both the inputs as mandatory just for the integrity purpose of this subflow. And now I will declare the output variables. In the output we will pass back to the flow whether this approval was approved or rejected. So for that I can name the variable as approval status and I will keep this output as string. So now we have two inputs and one output. I'll click on done and in the action I will go ahead and initiate an approval using the action and I will search for ask for approval. I'll click on this and then I have to pass the record on which this approval will be attached to. So we will already be getting that in the input in the requested item or the rhythm request. I will drag and drop this. The table is automatically picked and in the rules I will select anyone approves. So it can be dependent on your requirement. For me I have put it as anyone approves and here I will have to pass the approval group. So I will drag and drop this approval group here and now this particular step will initiate an approval on this requested item and the approval will be sent to this approval group. That is why we needed two inputs. Next is we will check whether the approver approved it or rejected it. For that I will put a flow logic and I'll put if and in the label I will put check if RITM was approved. And here in the condition I will drag and drop from ask for approval state and is approved. So if the approver approved it, we will pass back the output as approved. So it's a string field. You can pass whatever you want. I will be passing here the output from the flow logic assign subflow outputs and here I will select approval status and I will be sending back approved to the main flow. I'll click on done and I will end the flow here. So for that I will again use 
flow logic and as in subflow. Now I will write the else part in step 5. I will use this flow logic and I will be using else. And in else I will be returning rejected. So there are many other statuses available. You have to configure it yourself. But if it is not approved, I'm considering it was rejected. I will select the output again here, assign subflow outputs. I'll select the same output variable and I will be returning rejected. I'll click on done and again I will end the subflow here. And subflow. And now our subflow is ready to be published and when we publish it we will be able to use this in our main flow so i will be going ahead and creating a dummy flow to use this for that i will go back to my home page create new flow and maybe i can name it as approval demo flow and i will submit this for adding a trigger i will use the catalog item so service catalog i'll click on done and here I will be calling our subflow. So I will select subflow and I will search for the name of my subflow. So approval subflow. I will select this. And if you remember, there were two mandatory fields. So I will be passing those mandatory fields here. One is the requested item. The other is the approval group. So here I can use the requested item, which is under the trigger. I will drag and drop this. And here you will have to write the logic in your flow that what should be the approval group. But if it is already decided that you will be using cab approval or any other approval, you can go ahead and put that as well. So for example, I'll be using cab approval. I'll click on done. And this is the annotation. If you remember, we had put this subflow can be used for getting approvals from the approver. So it's really helpful for the person who is reading this flow as well. Now in the next step, we will put an if logic if and I will check if our ITM was approved. So I will have the same condition label, but the condition here would be the output which is coming from approval subflow. So I will drag and drop this here. And again, I will be checking is approved. And I will click on done. And maybe I will update the work notes of the RITM. For that, I will go to action. I will search for update record. And here I will again drag and drop the requested item record or the rhythm record. And I will search for work notes field. And I will update here your request was approved. And I will click on done. And then I will again have the else part here. For that I will again use the flow logic. Select else. I will update the record as your request was rejected. So update record. I will again drag and drop the requested item. I will go to the fields work notes. And I will put here your request was rejected. I'll click on done. And now our flow is ready as well. So I will activate this. And now we will be using this flow in a catalog item. So I already have a dummy catalog item. I will go there to maintain items. So you see I have a demo catalog item. I will use the flow name approval demo flow and I will update it here. Approval demo flow and I will update this here. I will go into this record to create a new request on this catalog item. Now I will click on try it. So this particular catalog item doesn't have any variables. So it's very straightforward and no scripts. And I will click on order now. And as soon as this request is raised, we will go to the rhythm record or the requested item record. I'll scroll down. I'll go here. And if I scroll down at the bottom, you would see there is a group approval called cab approval. And there are six approvers. So that means that group had six people in there. Now I will go ahead and approve it on behalf of one of the approvers. Maybe I will approve on behalf of Bernard. And as soon as it is approved, our activity or the work notes have been updated with your request has been approved. And if I scroll down here, you would see it has been approved. So the subflow is running as per our expectations. So this is a very simple use case where we had created a approval subflow which can be used by multiple developers or citizen developers.
to reduce the effort of work to write those lines of steps and we made it reusable by having those dynamic inputs. I hope this video was helpful to you. I will be sharing this on ServiceNow Share and if you like my content and if you are liking my videos, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button and thanks for watching video till the end.